If there's a breast cancer that is ER positive, which is estrogen receptor positive, then it's responsive to estrogen. So that is certainly growing that cancer. You mentioned breast cancer there, and this is something that I have, I would say probably two thirds of women ask me about is, you know, well, don't hormones cause breast cancer? So I think addressing that a little bit could be helpful for people. And um, this data has sort of come out of the uh, Women's Health Initiative from mm -hmm. like nearly two decades ago at this point, but that sort of stigma is still attached to hormone mm -hmm. replacement therapy. Breast cancer and hormones is approached kind of similarly. It's somewhat analogous to prostate cancer and hormones. So if you have, uh, and there's also different types of estrogen, specific types of estrogen can be uh, more inflammatory. Um, even oncologists will say, you know, we don't know exactly, other than bad luck, we don't know exactly what might cause or not cause any sort of cancer. But we certainly know that prostate cancers are grown by androgens. And we also know that depending on the estradiol receptor, alpha tends to grow tumors and beta not necessarily. If there is a breast cancer that is ER positive, which is estrogen receptor positive, then it's responsive to estrogen. So that is certainly growing that cancer, but it's hard to say if estrogen caused it. Often you find higher estradiol receptor, or sorry, estradiol levels in individuals that have obesity or diabetes. We know that insulin resistance, whether it's the action of insulin directly as in a growth mechanism causing overgrowth and less cell checkpoints, or whether it's a mechanism of IGF-1, which is kind of a combination of your insulin and growth hormone, again, causing cell overgrowth and less checkpoints, perhaps those mechanisms are more causatory, and these individuals also happen to have higher body fats and higher aromatase levels, and thus higher estradiol receptor levels as well. That's probably a better way to think about it, is that the uh, lack of cell checkpoints and the cells that have kind of changed into zombie cells, your immune system just doesn't have enough time to recognize them and destroy them. That's one reason why many of the most promising cancer therapies are immunotherapies. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it is with the IGF-1 and elevated insulin signaling, those are some confounding variables because they come in a cluster with the elevated BMI, for example. Mm -hmm. You have elevated estradiol, so it's not necessarily aha, we can say that the estradiol is the cause here because it may be these other variables. Mm -hmm. And the take home point I think is, uh, regardless of whether you're on HRT or not, you know, getting your regular screening for breast cancer, um, it, it's important and probably just as important if not more so if you are on a hormone replacement mm -hmm. protocol because you are you know, feeding in more estrogen or estradiol specifically than would otherwise be there. Mm -hmm. Another interesting point with breast cancer is you think of growth of glandular breast tissue as a balance between estrogens and androgens. And a lot of that has to do with the action of aromatase. And some of it just has to do with the action of your androgen receptor gene as well. For example, in men that have um, low testosterone and high estrogen, you can see growth of glandular breast tissue. Same thing in women. If you have someone that has even higher estrogen, whether a male or a female, but much, much higher androgens, that glandular breast tissue is not going to have as much hypertrophy because the androgen receptor activity itself, even if you take a synthetic androgen, synthetic androgens used to be treatments for breast cancers because they, were, um, they would halt the hypertrophy from the action of estrogen, even those synthetic androgens might be protective. So it, it's just one more reason why, um, whether you're male or female, but especially as a female for breast cancer risk, you want to have a normal ratio of testosterone to estrogen, which is often four times as much testosterone as estrogen milligram per milligram. Yeah, and that, that's something that I don't think is widely known is just how much more testosterone every human being has in their body compared to estradiol, even in women. So I think that's a great overview of you know, the breast cancer and some of those risks there associated with HRT that may not necessarily be caused by the HRT. Mm -hmm.